Hey, low riders, it's me, Lois, coming with you with this Destaphony World Tour against Melody Cherie and her second part of the interview with Dr. Heavenly Kimes and what my thoughts are in regards to this interview. Okay, so... First thing Dr. Heavenly said was, when did Moses come into the picture? It's very important. When did Moses come into the picture? And Destiny originally said a, a year and a half after she and LeBarrick were going through their divorce, their divorce procedure or what have you. And then she changed it to eight months. You see that lie shit? She always lying. That's the phony lies, lies, lies. But the bottom line is, where did the 15 years come in? That's what I want to know. If you knew this man for 15 years, you mean to tell me that he just happened to reach out to you and you just happen to say, well, I'm not ready for a relationship, but maybe, and then you end up in a relationship. I need you to explain that to me like I'm three, okay? Because what you're saying is not making any sense. You've known this man for 15 years and you've said you don't like the narrative alleged, and in my opinion, with some actual and factual, you don't like the narrative that you and Moses have been together for 15 years. Well... When did you and Moses actually meet? Number one. When did you and Moses actually have the conversation about if you and LeBarrick Williams uh, breaks up or divorces, that we gonna get back together? When did this conversation happen? Because nothing you're saying is lining up with the sun and the moon. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And he claimed you didn't want to muddy the waters, but you uh, you didn't want a relationship, but yet and still you went into a relationship. Did he break your arm? Did Moses break your arm, alleged in my opinion, with some actual okay. factual, to make you want to get into this relationship with him? What made you decide if you were trying to seek whatever it was you, you was trying to seek through getting to know Destaphony? and your therapy and whatever else you were doing, what made you make the decision to decide to be with Moses after LeBarrick left you 65 days after Law was born? I'm going to need you to explain that to me again, like I'm three. Okay, that's the phony, because what you're saying is not lining up and it's not making any sense. Low riders, I'm looking at notes, so please, please, please bear with me because you know me. I, I can't read, number one. I do wear glasses, but I don't wear glasses to read. I wear glasses to drive, but sometimes when I need to look at TV across the room, I put on my glasses. Now, you, uh, Heavenly asks you, do you think Latricia fits well with the cast? And then you claim she was your trainer, and I, what I want to know is when, how, where, and why. Because uh, if you're so broke and uh, you're financially struggling, how did you have this money to pay for a trainer, but you couldn't pay for the things that sustained you and your son? Uh, these are just questions I want to know. I don't know about the rest of the people, but these things I just want to know. Okay, and then you said you think she's a friend. So is she or isn't she? Is she or ain't she? Because I'm, I'm confusion at this point. I don't understand what you're saying. You contradict yourself with a lot of the statements that you make, and a lot of people don't pay attention to the contradictions and how quickly you change the lie in the mid-sentence. Okay? Okay. And then um, you claim that you were learning Ken and Trisha's relationship. And Destiny asked, asked you, what do you know? And then, of course, you had to do that little bug eyed action that you do. Whatever, you know, whatever. But then you say you know more than you know, but we can't talk about it because the season hasn't. Shut the fuck up, Destiny. Okay, shut the fuck up. 
You want everybody to think that you know all things and everything about everybody on this motherfucking cast when you actually don't. Because Melody was your full-fledged friend and you didn't obviously know shit about her. But now you're pretending you know all things. Shut the fuck up, okay? And then, um, Heavenly asked you, do you and Martel have a past? And you said no. And, of course, I don't believe it alleged, and in my opinion. And you said, why can't we be friends? No one said men and women can't be friends. Because I am best friends with an ex of mine. And him and my husband are friends. But there's a thing about crossing boundaries and saying things to one another and secrets and whatnot. There's absolutely nothing that my ex knows about my personal life with my husband except how much I love him and that I've told Michael about him. But anything other than that, there's nothing there. But you discuss Melody Cherie, supposedly your friend, with Martel, and then you say, well, everybody on the cast is there because of Martel. No, let's be real clear. Everybody there is because of Melody. Because Melody is the one that brought the storyline to Carlos. She just tacked Martel's name on because she was married to him, and you and I, and everybody knows that. Okay? Because once... Their marriage was over, and they uh, Martel thought he was being a smart ass by dissolving businesses. All of the world at large found out who the real brains of Holt and Holt and Holt Incorporated and the Holt anything was, and that was not Martel Holt. It was Melody Cherie Rogers. Okay, and then um. You said, uh, Melody, the lengths you go to to try to destroy people. Who is she trying to destroy? Because Melody don't talk about nobody. If you haven't paid attention because you are on her show, sitting at her table with your feet underneath her table, talking shit about her, who is Melody trying to destroy? Because from my vantage point, and I'm sure everyone else's and the Malometers at large, y'all are the ones that's trying to destroy Melody. She don't talk about y'all. She don't have nothing to say about y'all because anything she says about y'all just takes away from whatever respect and like and love and adoration we have for her. We don't see from Melody Cherie, what we see from the rest of the cast. We don't see all that backbiting and putting people down. and all. We don't see that from her, okay? She talks a lot of shit, and she's entitled to, okay? It's her show. It's her table. It's her motherfucking house. Recognize, okay? And then, um, Dr. Heavenly asked you about, uh, <laughs> Do you think that Marcel was in love with Melody? And we know that he's not in love with Melody. Let's be real clear about that, Destaphony. But you said, no, nah, because I see how much he loves Letitia. Okay. What? Because no one sees that but you. Okay. He may have love for Letitia. He may like Letitia. In love with Letitia, Marcel Scott is not, okay? And that is alleged, and in my opinion, with a lot of actual and factual. Because actions speaks louder than words. And you're trying to tell us just because we see a couple of minutes on a reality show, we're not getting a reality. But when it comes to you, we're getting a reality, so we need to fall back. So you're going to need to pick a side and, 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 and pick a cause because what you're saying is not making any sense. We shouldn't pick on you based on what you see on TV because that's not the true factual and actual. Okay, whatever. Okay. And I'm going to say that Marceau, he may not love Melody Cherie, but he has a lot of respect and adoration for her. And that's what makes their 
little bantering back and forth so realistic because it's true because Marceau lets his guard down when he is talking to Melody Cherie and Melody is just Melody when she's talking to Marceau and it comes across as genuine whereas the bullshit that y'all is doing uh -uh. fake okay all right and then uh, between me you and the gate post uh, that's the phony I don't think Letitia loves Marceau either. I think she has love for him, and I think she may like him a little bit because I don't think she likes him 100% based on past behaviors and so forth and so on. But either Letitia is biding her time to get out of this marriage or she's waiting to see what the outcome is with the, what uh, the outcome is with all this nonsense that's going on with Melody before she makes her stance known with her current husband Marceau Scott. That is my opinion, and it is alleged with some actual and factual. Okay. All right. And then. Uh, Heavenly was asking you about Marcel's character and saying he was an asshole. And you was um, saying, no, he wasn't. He's a very nice person. And then at the last minute, you said he was an asshole. So, again, a lie that was clarified within less than a minute that was cleaned up because you say something. And if somebody does not come back and check you on the answer and clarify what exactly you're saying... You're going to change your motherfucking answer. And I can bet 99 and 98% of the time, that's what you do. Okay? Because so far, that's all I've seen from you. You'll sit there and do a whole goddamn interview and then backtrack on a lot of shit and try to clarify it with more lies. Okay? And Heavenly said they look like whores. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what a whore looks like, Heavenly, but uh, they behave like whores. They do. But uh, Maurice is the loose cannon in the whore bunch. Him and Martel. They are the loose cannons. But Maurice just looks fucking guilty. Okay? Marcel yeah, can right. hold his cool longer than a lot of people. But when he has somebody like Martel, uh, excuse me, peeping his home card and trying to bring it to the forefront, sometimes he's going to have to respond to that. And so far, he has been able to hold his own in regards to that department because Martel Holt will not just let loose and just let the chips fall where they may. He will say that Melody Sheree is a whore, but he will not say out loud that uh, Maurice and Marceau Scott are whores. He will not do that. And see, I, I just don't understand that because... That is your ex-wife, the mother of your four children. And you would much rather disrespect her and injure and, 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 and discombobulate the minds of your young children just to make Melody look bad as opposed to calling out the bullshit of people who don't really do anything for you. Let's call a thing a thing, Martel. Okay. All righty. And then, um, <laughs> that's the phony. Everybody is attached to Martel first. Okay. Let's be real clear. Everybody was friends with Martel first. But nobody would be on this show if Melody Cherie was not the one to say, yes, okay. We can bring them on the show. Because Martel did not have that savoir faire. He did not know how to work the game to bring anybody on the show. That was all Melody. That is why everyone is sitting at Melody Cherie's table. So let's not act like you came on the show because of Martel. Because we see this is coming soon because Melody already told us. So we already know. So I think you should shut it because you're doing this and you should be doing this. Okay? You should shut it because when she break it all down, honey, and that's why I said the reunion is going to be lit. Okay? Because 
You just keep lying and then you lie on top of a lie and then you compound another lie and every one of them, Melody has been debunking. And you're sitting here sending subliminal, sub, sub, <laughs> subliminals, excuse me guys, subliminals talking about thank you for telling the truth. Yes, she told the truth, but she also debunked the lies that you were telling. Yes, you helped Melody Cherie rent cars, but what you failed to mention was that she was putting the monies in your coffers, and it do not cost that much money to rent no car. I don't give a flipping dip how long it was. The thousands that she was putting into your account, does, it does not take that much. Honey, I rented a car in New York for two motherfucking weeks for less money than Melody was giving to you. So stop with the bullshit. Okay? That is not a help. What that is, is assistance. And it's not 100% because Melody's doing most of the legwork. She's giving you the money. She's telling you what she wants. She's doing everything that she needs to do when it comes to renting a car. The only thing you had to do was go in and hand in your motherfucking credit card. And that is it. But everything else Melody Cherie did. So stop acting like you did so motherfucking much when you didn't. Okay, and then um, you're saying that uh, stop trying to uh, make people choose. I'm like, um, that's what Martell is doing. He's literally out loud asking people to make a choice between him and Melody, although they were friends with one another. Melody was friends with his friends and so forth and so on. Once the divorce happened, Martell decided that I don't give a fuck how nice Melody is. I don't want you to be friends with her no more. And that's what the fuck happened. Okay. So Melody, in my opinion, with some actual factual, Bought all of Martell's friends on the show just to give him some shine for these motherfuckers to turn around and stab her in the motherfucking back. Y'all are some low down, dirty scoundrels. That's all I got to say about that. Okay. And then Destiny says if people want to be neutral, like and try it and, and be. I can't even read my own uh, handwriting, but if they want to be neutral, let them. Well, why aren't you allowing people to be neutral? Why are you sitting here spreading lies upon lies upon lies in regards to Melody and Sheree Rogers? Because the bottom line is there are a lot of people that would have rode with you, the ignorant ones, let's be real clear, the ignorant ones, but would have rode with you had you just shut the fuck up about Melody, 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 Melody. Because there's a lot of people that don't like Melody. And those are the people you should have taken advantage of. But what you're trying to do is come on here and appeal to me. And I am a, mil a millimeter and a millimeter and a, mel a Melody Cherie supporter and Eminem Kid supporter. No, I do not support Martel Holt. Absolutely not. I do not support him. I don't see no redeeming qualities. I'm not going to pretend. But y'all motherfuckers are sitting up here pretending that if this shit happened to you, you wouldn't be upset. Look at how you acted with Sonny and Moses. But I'm her. And, 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 uh, you all upset about that, but you're not upset. About the fact that this man cheated for almost half of his marriage with a skank from Runt Street. Okay? And so, Heavenly asks, is Martell the type of person to do well with a platonic relationship? And of course, you have to laugh and all this other nonsense. No, he's not. He's not okay to do right with a platonic relationship because he want to sleep. He want to sleep with everything that he sees walking in the skirt. Period. No, that's number one. And number two, he cannot have a platonic relationship without talking shit about that person at some juncture in the game. Just like he's doing with Trish. He's talking shit because hmm, he knows something we don't know. I don't know. But Martel going to tell it. Like you said, Martel got a big mouth. And he may not tell it now because he ain't telling everybody shit. 
Because, according to you, everybody's on the show because of Martel. Lies, lies, lies. Everybody's on the show because of Melody Sheree. Let's be clear. And the sooner you learn which side your bread is buttered on, the better it'll be for you, Destaphony. Okay? And then, um, you said Martel can hold water. Okay, I already addressed that. And then, Heavenly said, uh, basically, that Martel was a good dad. And you, had before that, had said he was a good husband. When, how, and what? When the fuck was he a good husband? When he was sneaking out the house cheating on his wife for half of their marriage? Or when Melody was the one that was making the connections, the business connections to elevate their business, and he was laying in the bed on dirty sheets with Ariane Curry, a legend in my opinion, with some actual factual, because that shit is online. Okay? When, did, when was he a good husband? I'm in agreement with him being a good dad because the reason he had to be a good dad because Melody was the brains and the motherfucking brawn behind Holt and Holt Industries, period. Melody was the one that was making the business connection. Melody was the one that was setting all the meetings and the agreements and the contracts and all that up. All Martell did was go out and possibly pick up a motherfucking hammer and hammer something. He got that done in two minutes, and then he spent the rest of the day sleeping with his fucking mistress. Alleged, and in my opinion, with some actual and factual. And that's why... It was so easy for Melody Cherie to leave that man because she realized after she sat there behind that desk for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours setting up these things to make them and their business successful that this man was still catting the motherfucking around. He didn't give a fuck about anything that she was doing. The only thing he cared about is that his debit card still worked and he was able to be able to swipe, swipe, swipe and buy this hoe. Um, and yes, that's what she is and, and was, was and is a hoe because she was messing with a married man and he was able to swipe his goddamn debit card and get her some motherfucking Skittles or whatever the flipping dip she wanted. Okay. Martel Holt was not a good husband by anybody's yes. measures at any time. Was he a good husband? Because he sought her out in college with the intent with the intent to use and abuse her and to exploit her for her knowledge, her know-how, and everything else that came with Melody Cherie. He swooped her up before anybody else could get to her. And we all know that. Okay? And then, uh, Heavenly says that he's a narcissist. <laughs> Which I'm in agreement with. Because any man who has literally thought about what he has done to implode his entire 12 to 14 year marriage for a piece of ass uh, and then has to explain to everybody, well, she cheated too, it's a motherfucking narc, okay? Use a narc, Mar Martel Holt. And Destiny, use an asshole for sitting behind him and riding with him when you're claiming that you're experiencing the same bull crap with LeBaric. Hey, LeBaric, baby, because you know I don't believe that's the phony's lies, but I don't believe nothing she said. Because she lied from the moment she wake up until sundown, LeBaric. So I got you, bruh. Wakanda forever. But. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because although this was part two of a 50, almost 53 minute interview, we're just fucking eight minutes and 38 seconds into the video and all Destiny could do is not say anything positive about Melody at all. Everything has to be her fault, subliminally, up under the table. She doesn't speak the truth about anything. All her lies have been debunked, but she continues to lie because until she is completely embarrassed, which I'm waiting on it, y'all. I'm waiting on it. Reunion, I'm waiting on it. 
she's not going to shut up with this bull crap. Okay? And that little subliminal you tried to uh, subliminal that you tried to send destiny with the hat and the bending your head down and all that talking about Detroit whatever. Okay, shut the fuck up. We don't do that. We don't have to say where we from, okay? If we standing on business, you know what I'm saying? The fact of the matter is, is you could be from anywhere and stand on business. I'm from New York and I don't believe none of the bullshit you saying, okay? Being from where you from ain't got shit to do with the lies you tell, okay? And that's what you need to address and stay focused on and stop trying to bring another woman down because you may find yourself without a job next season, okay? That's all I got to say on this subject, low riders. Okay, I want you to get below in these comments and tell me what you think about this video. Let's definitely have a conversation because I appreciate it. Sorry about the noise in the background. And once again, I am asking you guys to please donate to my nonprofit, the Brian Joseph British Number 44 Education Fund Incorporated. 50% of the proceeds will be going to Oregon State University for scholarships and financial aid to students who want to attend Oregon State University or who is already attending Oregon State University and they are having a little financial difficulty. So I hope you guys support me on this journey and continuing my brother's legacy. And that's all I have to ask. And 44 more guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for listening. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Low riders, I'm out. Mwah. Peace.